Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bottles and Bricks, a Last of Us podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Ronan Unchained, and we are we have just seen a pilot episode of HBO's The Last of Us, the highly anticipated, beloved adaptation of Naughty Dog's masterpiece work of a video game. And full transparency, this is a spoiler discussion. So if you have not seen the episode, Go see it immediately and then come right back and join us because we are going to get into deep dive of details and what was presented in this pilot. But I can't do this alone. I refuse to do this alone. I have to have to talk this out with fellow Last of Us fans. And with me, I have two friends who I discovered are big fans of the games. And we've been hyped, hyped for this show. So, <laughs> Sam, Ty, come on in. Hey. Hey, Ooh. what's goody out there, good people? We about to get into this, so if you ain't seen it, we about to spoil it for you, so you've got your warning. We ain't holding nothing back. No. We ain't holding Nathan, nothing. Back. Nathan, Nathan back. back. Hey, there you go. I know you did that. We about, um, we about, to, treat this, we about to treat this like Joe treats these clickers out here, man. <laughs> Hold nothing back. We're going into uncharted territory. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... Um, so Let's do this, um, because Ty, you had just like recently just saw it. Like your pulse right now is is bouncing up and down. You just saw it conclude. Um, you yeah. played the game. You yes. are familiar with the characters and story. What are your immediate thoughts on the pilot? Naughty Dog does it again. <laughs> I, I can't even. I, here's the thing. I can't even say. HBO. I have to say Naughty Dog because if there's one thing Naughty Dog does, it's control their their property and make sure you get what you're supposed to get. So Naughty Dog has done it again. Naughty Dog has found a way to to give me reason to hold on to my HBO Max subscription. Like <laughs> I don't know. I, I I honestly wasn't sure because I I had. When I first got into The Last of Us, I didn't even have the original on PS3. I got it when I got my PS4 and it and the Same. remastered version came with it. Yeah. I loved it. I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't really too comfortable about the whole them doing part one because I'm like, I didn't think it was necessary. But after watching this first episode, I'm ready to go back into that world. And I'm honestly ready to go back into it with the PS5 graphics. I might be willing to spend that money for a game I already got with the new graphics, you know. So Naughty Dog has done it again. Absolutely incredible pilot episode. And if that's the pilot episode, God only knows what the rest of the season is like. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Sam, um, this was technically your second time, second and a half time seeing it. Yeah. You were the one out of all the three of us who saw it the earliest, and you were kind enough to be like, Ronan, I'm not going to tell you anything except that, like, wow. And um, so what are your thoughts on the pilot? I So uh, we, we did do a non-spoiler review. If you guys want to know our unfiltered non-spoiler thoughts, go and check that out right now on uh, Team JVS. But... Now that it's here and the spoilers are free reign, oh my gosh, the emotional damage, the emotional resonance. <laughs> First mm -hmm. off, I'm going to put it like this. I remember, you know, on PlayStation 3 playing this game and I was like, daggone, man, I feel pain now, you know? I actually feel pain. I know this story. I played the game multiple different times with different versions, different remasterings. I played the second game. I know what's going to happen, but some kind of a way in this pilot, they they took you along the ride of Joel's daughter, like, differently, because yeah. you get to see how the world was. You get to kind of flourish and see her in her in her backdrop with her friends and being at school, how she interacts with the neighbors, the kind of loving daughter she is, how she compliments him. All to build up to what we suspected was going to happen, but it happened differently. Yeah. It happened way more fluidly, and and it still hurt. I still cried anyway. Yeah. Um. And that was just stupid iceberg because this was an eighty-one minute episode. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This was a ten out of ten episode. As a pilot, 
they had so much they could have failed on. So much they could have failed. And I'm not even going to say it's just Pedro Pascal because he is amazing in this. It's everything. They had the score perfect. They got amazing cinematography. The daggone CG and the and the set designs are amazing. The camera angles are amazing. And they're finding a way of really truly adapting something that is on a video game medium and making it true to form on television. And that is hard. That's the reason why we've never had a good successful one on television or movie, really. Um, this was everything to me. I loved it. And we're going to go into the spoilers back and forth because there are some things that they did change. But I would debate and say that I think those changes are essential to character progression on a television format. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Um, so um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. Uh, what I was gonna say. I'm all who knows? I might, I might. <laughs> I might bring this up. Um, so I don't know if all of you know, and I think I told the Sam. Initially, once the first game came out, Hollywood came knocking. They're like, "We want to do the movie. We want to do the movie." And for a while, it was developed that like that Naughty Dog was gonna team up with Sam Raimi to produce a Last of Us movie, mm-hmm. and at that time, the only one that was like attached in terms of an actor to be involved was Macy Williams as Ellie. And she would make a great Ellie, but that never came to fruition. And that was about 10 years ago. There's a panel. If you go on YouTube, there's a panel of them going to San Diego early on, be like, we haven't filmed anything yet. We're just, we're announcing we're going to do it. To see it now transition to television is fitting, especially with what television has been doing over the past 10 years since that announcement. Um, television, I would say now rivals, you know, the movie theaters. Yeah. I still am a cinema guy. I will go to the cinemas, but there's just as good stories acting in television. And yeah. oh, that 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 logo. Um, to me, what was weird <laughs> is that my expectations was just like, all right. As far as my money is concerned, the and what's weird, they're not even related to Night Dog. Only two other types of films after the game had come out, had truly honored in spirit what The Last of Us means and could do. And to me, those two films were Logan and A Quiet Place, both part one and part two. Those two those two franchises were the ones that, like, they nailed what Last of Us is, it embodies, and what it can do for an audience that's either related or unrelated to the, the characters. And yet... I, and, and, you know, Sam was telling me, like, like, remember, this is a television show. It's not the game. So you have to let go what you know and go with it. And I was like, I know that. But they're nailing such beautiful moments from the game that I love and giving it another dimension. Yep. Um, I wrote down, holy shit, we're spending the, the morning of the day when, when everything goes to hell. And that was something that I, I found was rewarding and that I'm like, you know what? In television, you could do that. Yeah. You could do that. You could spend time with the characters and see their dynamics r- instead of right before, you know, five minutes before everything goes to loose. And you see how Joe is more as a dad, how Tommy is, a, is an uncle, uh, how Sarah is as, as, as a teenage girl. And um, they delivered on that. And then when they jump, when they make the time jump and just seeing how 20 much years later, the civilization has fallen, it just... Uh, first of all, if anybody of you, who, if you're anybody who, who worked on the show as, as a crew member, and if you're watching this, give yourself a round of applause because yeah, I definitely. could tell Pats the on money, the back, all that. Yeah. The money was spent and the energy was put into it. I could tell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's let's start at the beginning because I know we can go jumping around, but so we're introduced immediately with it's 1958, 68, something like that, in the 50s, 60s. And it's a regular talk show where somebody's interviewing scientists and people in the medical fields, and they bring up the the the, the danger of uh, um, an outbreak or the, the danger of, of virus spreading. And then saying, "No, we're not concerned with that." And you know, somebody poses the question, "What are you?" Fungus, and breaks down where fungus comes from, where it connects to the world, mm-hmm. and someone you know reverts the the debate, being like, "Well, that's just for ants now. It's not humans." Sure, it is. Sure, that you're right. Mm-hmm. Because the, the planet is not heated up yet. If it's heated up, that's a whole other conversation. And it was just like, 
it's uh, that is as transparent and as meta as it gets with where we are now and what our planet has been going through over the past two decades of just True. it's been heating up and I love that they the, the minutia they went into it. Did you like? Did you guys like that opening? Yeah, I thought it was very fascinating because I was like, wow. And, and even when he was talking, he brought up like you know LSD and like bringing up like you said with the ants, but. I mean, at the end of the day, what what's the sad part about it is he kind of was just really cold to it. He's like, uh, whatever. And then the other one was like, eh. And I was like, they don't know, but they're like literally prophesying where this is going to go. Yeah. And I think it's very fascinating to see what that means for Ellie, because that takes a d- different perspective on her. We, I mean, even in the games, we still don't know how she is going to be able to ultimately help humanity, right? Where it's like with this situation, you got a progressive thing that's going to naturally happen, but now she's an enigma. She's the inconsistency to that. Yeah. And you got to, you know, from, I think you said it was like the 50s or the 60s when that took place. I believe so, yeah. It was 58 or 68, something around those lines. And then it started on 2003. Which is is ironic. Which is 10 years because... The game the game's 2013, yeah, yeah. And then 2023 is when this show is this show, yeah. aired, and when you yeah. guys are watching it right now, even though we're recording it in 2022, you guys are watching it right now in 2023. But it's yeah. it's it's very fascinating to me because I, it's layers that I didn't think about when we started playing the game. We'd like, you know, we see Sarah and she's kind of like, "Where's my dad? What's going on?" You know, all of a sudden it's boom, boom, boom. Action, action, action. Like, no, we get a progression of everything. Even when we saw the um, the clerk, the person that she was going to go take her dad's watch to, and then all of a sudden, the wife was like, no, she's got to leave. She's got to leave. And they didn't give you any indications of stuff happening. It was just she was hip to something. And then by the time she got back home, like, that's when all hell broke loose. And it's, dude, I loved how they set this all up. It's so and it different, was, but it was good. And Ty, it was mostly background stuff. And you and I think you and I both know, caught it where it was like you seeing the, you know the trucks rushing through the streets, and you hear helicopters going, and someone at the background, I think an old lady says, like, oh, that's always that's 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 a day-to-day thing. Someone's you know chasing somebody. The helicopters, you know, probably right now in my neighborhood, I'm gonna hear it right now in a few minutes, the helicopter. Yep. So <laughs> I liked how they made it a day-to-day thing, but if you're a fan, you're like, oh no, it's happening. It's happening right now. So, Ty, um, how did that work out for you? Where it's like, all right, we're seeing, you know, the day we wake up of Joel's birthday, and now we have to just wait until the bomb goes off. Literally. All right. So, so I, I, I'm going to jump in and cover a couple things here with this. First off, this this show is not a ten out of ten. <laughs> Let's be real. This show is a 37 out of 10. 45, <laughs> 72, 89, 153, 247 out of 10. This this show is like beyond perfect. I'm glad they didn't go with a movie because there's absolutely no way you could take something as epic as The Last of Us and, and try to give it to us all in two and a half hours. I think okay. they made the best decision there. I agree with you on, on the background and the layout because they're subtle things. And that's the other thing, because it makes the show rewatchable because you're going to go back and go through it and you're going to notice the little subtle things, the trucks going by, how the town went from a little bit, went from active to less active till by the time she gets kicked out of the actual watch store, there's no one on the street to the time where she's at the neighbor's house. She goes in and you literally see in the background the 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 grandmother are so dying and really in the chair and the way she goes to the subtleties with the dog where the dog is like yo you're not taking me back in there i'm out like <laughs> yeah. it's the little things that make it so grand you know this game this see about to say this game this <laughs> the game yes the game as well but this show literally takes the the actual true essence of the game and actually make it on the same platform yeah. it's great based on the little things yeah. the little yeah. things make it big you know and i agree with you we have not seen anything of a video game 
transition to a live action where it's actually been good, like amazing until now. And I'm just going to call it out. We ain't see it with Assassin's Creed. We ain't seen it with, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Michael Fassbender. I, I mean, but much like Michael Faster playing an assassin, Brandon Routh playing Superman, Henry Cavill playing Superman, you got great oh actors with bad scripts and bad <laughs> movies and bad transitions. I'm just calling it what it is. Like, if they ever do a God of War, Christopher Judge, they better find a way to, to paste her to white or Chris, Chris Judge and let him do the role. All well, I'm saying is... Well, that's been confirmed. As yeah, well. Amazon. Amazon and, got and, a brand new I, series coming out. I'm up. absolutely fine with that. But what I can say, we we've there's never been a problem with stories in games. Okay. If you have a game with a good story, most folks will let it fly because the story is epic. But what we've seen with The Last of Us, much like we've seen with God of War, much like how we've seen with e other Naughty Dog projects and Santa Monica Studio, not to throw them in here, but I'm just going on the premise of the genre. Stories, the way they narrate is just so epic, and they put the time into the details. Yeah. They put the time into the emotions. Like, who didn't get choked up when he actually got up off the ground and saw... And the thing was, it wasn't even that and, and the detail of, well, he's not going to get up and see that she's dead. He's going to get up and see it's the last seconds before she dies. Yeah. yeah. And between the time she is panicking and he's holding her, to, picking her up to where he looks at Tommy and Tommy just says, Joel, we don't even see it. They, they see Tommy and all he says is Joel. And in that moment from that, where from when he says Tommy to Tommy says Joel and they come back she has breathed her last breath and died like it has I mean how much more emotionally epic can you get than that and then yeah. in that particular moment you literally jump 20 years yeah. you know and yeah. you're looking at the aftermath of what has occurred and you're looking at how Joel um, um, has quote unquote adjusted or adapted to this survival mode. And he's literally someone who has nothing to lose and gives no F. His daughter's gone. All he's got is Tommy. And even Tommy, you know, can, can is, is at risk now because he, he ain't hear back from the tower. But Joel does not care at this point. You know what I mean? Joel don't care about man, woman, or child. If you're in his way, he's coming for you. So much so that somebody that screwed over a friend of his is afraid and actually got people to jump her is afraid of the ramifications of what Joel is going to do. Right. Like, it's the subtle little details in this. It's the emotional subtle details that makes this show a 347 553 895 1027 out of 10 like this, <laughs> this i have i have yet to see a pilot episode that has drawn me in like this and i love it and let's be real about this sam it's really hard to separate yourself as a as someone who's played the games yeah. and not look for the game pieces in here but because you know the studio that's doing it, the game developers, the people that are involved, it's the first time you can look at a video game transition live action series and appreciate the differences. Yep. Appreciate going to 1968 and getting that explanation. You know, appreciate the, the subtle changes, not just of Joel just showing up in the house like in the game and everything kind of breaks loose that build up where she's at where that where his daughter is basically living her little her teenage life doing her thing they even have the little witty banter cuz they really don't want to deal with the neighbors and they have their little witty banter back and forth throwing each other a little shade competition yeah. Yeah. like all of that kind of all of that built up to get you in to get you invested yeah. and for for the director the actors 
the producers, the writers, specifically the writers, to give you something where within this short span of an 80, 81 minute show, a, the few minutes they give you with his daughter, by the time she's gone, you're so invested in her, you want her to survive. And, sure. and if you've never played the game, it's gonna be a shock. But even the fact that you've played the game and you know what's gonna happen to her, you still feel the same way. Yep. That is commendable. That is so freaking epic. Like it's yeah. just absolutely epic. Yeah. Kudos to The Last of Us. Kudos to Naughty Dog and every single person that played a role in making this happen. Yeah. Um, and I just I, I just wanted to comment on something. I mean, I I got to give her her flowers, dude. Nico because, Parker, yes, she because, she nailed it. Because she, she I can believe she's a 13 or 14 year old. Yeah. And I can believe that she's been watching out for her dad. Like, like Ty said, it's the little things. Like her commenting that it's your birthday. You weren't going to do this for yourself. I yeah. got it. Meaning that she's taking responsibility to being not only his daughter, but trying to be that person that's having his back, you know, since, you know, he doesn't have anybody else. Yeah. You know, but I think what was fascinating to me about it was how it went down. Because with this, Tommy got arrested. Yes. And so Joel went back into town to go get him and then he got back home late because he went to the jail to get him which is fascinating because then that puts a level of responsibility on tommy for some of this later on like these are just mm -hmm. interwebs like this is that's just great writing because then you you don't know if tommy may have decided to join the fireflies because he he might feel responsible for what happened because yeah, ultimately the, the yeah. if 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 tommy would have just went home and they were all home, they probably would have saw the alert, got out pretty early, and they might be all alive, you know? And I, I think that that's an interesting, small little detail that I never, it added a new layer to Tommy as a character in just that small moment. Even down to when um, when they were out in the street and everything flipped over after the plane crash, which that plane crash, oh my gosh. Oh my God. That was, yeah. oh, but yeah. when, the, when, the, when the truck, flipped over and joe was like it's gonna be okay he got her out she couldn't move her leg and all of a sudden the ambulance crashes into the truck and pins them away and like he kept on saying tommy 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 tommy's like look yo get her out i'll find my way it's it's so fascinating to kind of see it differently like it's a it's almost oh, like yeah. watching this whole thing through a different set of focal lens because yeah. later on it it adds more to why joe is trying to get tommy because he has absolutely no one left. Like, that's his last blood. Like, he wants to protect his brother because that's all he has to hold on to. Um, that's his last line of humanity. That's really what it is. Right. That's his last line of humanity. If something happens to Tommy, the world better watch out. That's basically what it is. And which is going to be very interesting symbolism because that's going to be the complete opposite later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's weird, game. what's weird is that I love that that when it goes when when the outbreak goes down at night we're seeing it through sarah's perspective yep. which i'm like oh it's a, that's a nice switch to see yeah. what she's going to get through and the fact that by the time tommy and joel get back they are aware that yo something's wrong we got to get out of here yep and i like the, the subtle touch of like oh yeah tommy's a veteran he was involved in desert right. storm right yeah but all right to, to um him joining the fireflies and i mean it, it's weird because i to me, what I'm still getting used to is that for right now, I think the dialogue is more subtle in the game than it is in the show. So I have to get used to some more more added stuff than what the dialogue I'm used to knowing. But that's okay because right. it's television. And I, I love that because, you know, Tommy was flipping out and Joe had to be the one to be like, everybody calm down. Just calm down. We're going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here. And even, you know, again, they didn't have to do that. But then passing to that family, like in the game. What are you doing? Keep driving. They got a kid, Joel. So do we. And then and then going onwards. And I was not concerned or worried. I was just like, how are they going to do Sarah's end? How are they going to do that? Right. And the fact that to me, they, in the game, Joel looks at Tommy and then just goes back to, to focus on, on Sarah. 
And this one, he literally lets it out. Be like, Tommy, please help me. And it's Joel. Yeah. You know, Tommy doesn't yeah. want to say it, but like, Joel, she, she, she's gone. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. Look, um, let's, let's keep it real. George Lucas could have learned from that because that was literally the reverse. <laughs> like, Darth Vader didn't say nothing when he tossed the Emperor. Then he added in him letting it out. He should have left it alone. This one, you're actually glad Joel <laughs> let it out. It actually gave more depth to actually adding in the, hey, Tom, yeah, you, yeah. Kudos but again, to, kudos. you guys it, bringing it up that, like, Tommy, and it's weird that, like, in the game, Tommy and Joel hate each other at the beginning uh, once the, the, pan, the outbreak has happened. You know, he, you know, he tells uh, Ellie, I believe his last words were like, I don't ever want to see your goddamn face again. At this time, he's still in contact with him and trying to make sure he's okay. And then you get the introduction with that little girl. And I, I had a feeling something was off. And, and, and Sam was just like, just, just remember her shoes. I was like, okay. Is she mm-hmm. Ellie? This doesn't this doesn't count. Is she somebody's uh, you know just a new character they're bringing in? And the fact that I knew something was off was when they checked her. It was yeah, red. It was red. Yeah. Right. And then the lady was calming her like a mother would and telling all this happy stuff. And then I saw the needle. The yeah. needle was the thing that gave it away from me was because I remember the game. Joel passes to a section where they bring out people who are possibly infected, and then when one of them tries to run, they pin him down and they put a needle on them. And that's how that, that yeah. kills them. And I was yeah. just like. Wow! Oh and yeah, I, I, I actually, that, I, I actually forgot about that. But yeah, what gave what gave it away for me was one they they pinned her down into the wheelchair and basically tried to come. The lady basically tried to comfort her, yep. and when I saw the thing come back red, I'm like, her side, dude, her side, right? <sighs> yeah, 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 right, her side, and I was just like. Okay, why I said you're offering her all I'm like, oh man, right. they're about to kill this. And and I and and just like I said before, it's the little things because they could have had her role in at any point and done the deed, but you would not have had the emotional effect if you and the in, the emotional investment if you hadn't seen that that child braved God knows what right. to even just get there. To finally get to some form of sanctuary, only to meet their death, yep. yeah, and only for us to see Joe when we see Joe again after he's holding his child, I said, dead it, yeah. in his arms. Yeah. We pick back up with Joe holding another child, dead in his arms, and the way he handles it, it's just emotional. So it's just twenty years. No. Of of just losing the emotions that the, he doesn't even care. Yeah. He's literally gripping his own child, losing it over her death. And with this child into I the love fire. That. I was like, I, well done, TV. Well right. done. Yeah. Well six done. Bucks. Like, well done. Well done. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and for the record, we're not proponents of enjoying, you know, seeing dead children, but the, but no, the way no, the story yeah. is being told. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because we're getting a little hype over the fact that he tossed the kid into the fire. But yeah. It's yeah, the, but it's, it's, it's the, the way they did it. it. It's the story. It's, to it's, it. it's, it's like uh, an immediate shift. We see yeah. him at his worst moment of his life. Then twenty years later, he's doing this on a regular basis, right. which was even he's more just numb. epic. Because later on, after dealing with this little girl who's feisty, abrasive, all over the place, mm-hmm. you know, they're cornered. You know, and just like it was like a PTSD moment. Yep. Yeah. He was like, he raised his hands up. It's weird because he kind of looked back at Ellie first. Yeah. Then he immediately glossed over. And then he was like, he just lost it. Full he straight up like now. Batman on yeah. adrenaline. On he, <laughs> Batman. He, yeah. he knows. He, he had the moment because it was a combination of I won't see someone else kill another child. Yep. And I am going to finally do what I couldn't do for my the daughter back then. Yeah. Although he un- knows and understands that nothing he does is going to bring her back. Yeah. This this particular thing is out and, and subtle things. He is this emotionless guy who doesn't care tossing dead children into the fire. But in this particular moment where a child can die and he's the one person that can prevent it. It's a trigger for him. It yeah. literally sent him yeah. back to 2003 yeah. and yeah. knowing there was nothing he can do about it, but he still 
made sure that this child survived. It's which, just which makes me so consider thing. what's going to happen once they really connect. Because the only time I saw this type of thing in the first game was once Ellie meets a character called David down the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Joel goes to the lanes and be like, is she alive? And once Ash is be like, where is she? And is she okay? This is before she knows her and is already like annoyed by her. But like you said, it, it's that mind, mind fuck of a thing where it's just like, he's back in 2003 and he's like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> um, and the fact that Tess is there yeah, trying to settle stuff down, which Sam, Anna, what's her name? Anna Torv, I believe. Yep. Uh, she that attitude of just the wittiness and the one being in charge. I immediately, immediate, immediately got it. I mean, does she doesn't look like Annie Hershing? The, the, I think the actress who played uh, Tess in, in the original game, but the attitude that's the thing I will give to Tess and Ellie. That like, damn, the yep. attitude, the essence is right there. Now I just want to sh- see her shoot up a place and just go full on action. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about that, man? Yeah, she she's great. Um, she she commands a room. It's yeah. really fascinating when she was kind of just like held down, face jacked up, and I'm kind of like, these are all men in here, and like they're the ones scared of her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's like certain actors, you know, some people can overact. She didn't. She just like, you know what, you know, you can cut one of the fingers off. Like, I don't really care. Like, can you just get me out of here so I can put something on my face and go back yeah. home? And he was mm-hmm. like, but yo, your partner, though, he's like, no, it's okay. I got him under control. When really she's lying in the back of her head. Because yeah. as soon as she went back to Joel, that, that scene, when Joel realized that they had the battery, she knew, oh, crap, I got to calm this ninja down. Yeah. And he... um. He was like, no, we need the. He's like, all right, well, cool. We'll go get our battery back. We'll kill these jokers and, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. But I love her personality. Um, I love how Joel really needs someone like her to kind of motivate him somewhere because he doesn't have like a direction. Like, it's kind of like he's doing this and this and this to go to point A to point E, but it's no direction whatsoever. Right. Um, and also, she kind of comforts him. Like, even like when she was, you know, dealing with the jail cell all night. She didn't be like, oh, wow, man, we got to go do this. Like, she let him rest. He let him sleep off his drunken stupor and hold and held him. Um, so, no, I think the actress is doing a really great job. The thing that I was going to ask you guys about is, do you guys think that Joel's having this person, and I guess this goes back to the game, too, because I never really analyzed it like this. The trauma of losing his daughter is also a trigger because of the responsibility that he has taking on this young girl. No matter whether whatever way he feels about her doesn't matter, but just having something of a responsibility all over again, what do you feel like that's doing to this version of Joel in this moment in this episode? Because I feel like when he was like, Oh heck no, I ain't doing this, like we don't do cargo, and then even at his benefit. Like, he was like, I still don't want to do this. That conversation that he had kind of with Tess, like, she convinced him. It wasn't so much anything that Mallory said or anybody else. And then when Ellie had him cornered in the apartment (laughs) and found out about the different radio protocol and stuff like that, he was compromised. And I don't think that he's let himself breathe like that. Um, But I was curious y'all perspective on it because I didn't take that I didn't take that thought process until later on in the game, but automatically the the seeds are already being planted early, which is fascinating. It makes me wonder how long they're going to hold us stretching that they're going to be like irritated with one another and how long that's going to snap and when he's going to start to finally trust her and actually care for her. That's what I'm wondering because he that was a reactionary PTSD moment. Right now, he's still clinging on to, to Tommy. So his, his humanity is still not dead because his brother's still out there and he's still worried and concerned about him. So that's a cool twist from the game where he just, in the game, he get two fucks. He's just, just like, I don't care. And he knows that Tommy was, was related, to, you know, in cahoots with, with Marlene. Um, and th- that the fact that a lot of this stuff that initially comes right before the journey is playing out pretty quickly, which that's going to... I wonder how much of the journey is going to feel like a long trip, which I'm game for, and how much, hopefully, 
for this version, and it also enriches Ellie and, and Joel's relationship, relationship. Yeah. just like what Troy and Ashton did in the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm, 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 I'm like, again, it, it's the dialogue. I'm trying to reconfigure myself, be like, this is TV dialogue, and they're bringing stuff in from the game. Now it's also the pacing of scenarios, which the one thing I could have thrown in as a Nick pick, which was like, I wish I would have stayed more time in the, the day before the outbreak to see how that played out. But I'm also having to reconfigure and be like, I'm letting go of gameplay where gameplay also emphasized on the pacing and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the pacing is going to play out and how it'll go from the first episode, looking back at it now to when it's about to conclude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to stretch this out a bit and they're going to have these different encounters help to build that bond and well basically open Joel up where he has no choice but to open up and care for Ellie um which is going to lead to the end of the the whenever they end it out hope whether it's this season or they do another season like you, we all know the end of the last of us at least part one so what I, I think they're going to do is they're going to stretch it out because he does not, under any circumstances, want to bond with this girl. Nope. You know, he is already reluctant because of he don't deal with transporting humans. They talked about, you know, when, when he went to the guy to find out about where Tommy was in the tower and he was like, look. You know, infected are not the only ones out there. You got the raiders. You got the you know you got slavers. Slave. Yeah. You got slavers. You know, so he he's kind of going into this. He doesn't want to deal with this because he knows what's out there. But then for him to realize who she is or what she is, and no, it it literally just became a hundred times more crazy, a hundred times yeah. more vital. You know. Yeah. And I think through the course of what they're going to go through, through the survival aspects and how she shows her prowess, you know, and her survival and and them working together, that's where the bond is going to form, which ironically, if he had never done that, The Last of Us would not be the end of it wouldn't even be how it was. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't even need a part two, but the fact that they go through this bonding process through the game and what it leads to is just so incredibly epic to actually make the decision he made. And I won't go past that because you know, that that'll all come later, but still, I I think they're, I think they're going to stretch out the, they're going to stretch out the bonding because they can afford to, it's a TV series. Yeah. You know, and I, I so first before I say this part, I like that, and you know it's part of the first episode. They already uh, nodded to two things in part two game. You guys know what those two two things were? Yeah, yeah. Go on, drop it. Okay, I I caught well, it. Go on, drop it. This is a spoiler discussion. Yeah. So the first thing that I noticed that's from the second game was Sarah borrows something from her neighbor's house, which is a movie, mm-hmm. and it's a movie that I think Joel loves. That movie that Joel loves is hinted at in part two when Ellie sees a poster and be like, look, Joel, your favorite movie. So mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that is from part two. That's a deep right. cut. And another thing was the mention of slavers. Mm-hmm. Up until that point in part one, we don't really know that. We know there's, you know, bandits and people like trying to steal from one another. And then, we, get, you know, then we meet David and his people. But the thing about slavers, that's not hinted at until part two of the game. So I was like, right. that is, that is subtle. And yet I was like, I was like DiCaprio once upon a time. Like, oh, I know where yep. that's going. I know right. where that's going to hit that at. Um, and I, I, yeah, I agree that like it's, I, I'm fast. I would not be surprised if in episode two, people, people, he, Joe's going to be a dick. He's going to be mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. About yeah. That, that whole slavers part. I, I was curious to see where they're going with that. They may leave an actual hint at it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be an encounter that Joel and them see, but somebody may leave like a conversation about it, which will be interesting. Yeah, I we agree. we we don't we don't. I I think what Naughty Dog is doing is 
kind of sliding in the little subtleties for part two, just in case, just, just in case. case. They're I trying agree. to give you as much of it as possible, just in case. But I'm really looking forward to see how they do this entire series. Yep. Like, are we going to get part two, season two? Are we going to get it in a season three or four? Like, when the how are they going to stretch out part one? So this, yeah, how this many is the crazy thing, be great. though. This is the crazy thing, Ty. Part two takes place in the past and in the present. The beginning yes. of part two takes place during so yeah certain characters in part two are gonna have to be in this by the well, second season no matter what right but but like we said it's the little things yeah ronan said they already gave subtle things to part two look at the how they covered the whole pilot episode it's yep. basically like part two they went to the past to frame it up yep. for the present you know to take you into the future, which is our, you know, present 2023. But they, they're they already setting up this premise so they don't have to do it when they do part two. And I'm just going to speak it into existence because this thing is just too good for them not to <laughs> ride this thing all the way out into the sunset and give us everything. You know, this this is, this is literally Game of Thrones level. I'm just going to call it right now. This is Game of Thrones level. Minus season eight epicness right here. <laughs> Seriously. So I, I love that they've kind of they're setting up the series theme and genre for part one and part two. That here's some of the past, here's how it leads to the present, here's how it is in the future or our present, you know. And that way, when they get into that part two aspect, they don't have to set the world up. The world's already set. We're used to it now. Facts. You know, and yeah, I, I, you know, just quick shout out to Gabriel Luna. Um, I felt the, the brotherhood right there. I, I felt, I felt it right now. Yeah. I'm like calling him old fuck. I'm like, I'm like, that's that's Tommy. That that's that's Joe yeah. and Tommy right there. And yep. uh, so I can't wait to see what Gabriel is gonna do with that role. And just because that's that's besides Ellie and Joe's journey, the relationship between Joe and Tommy, that's my second favorite connection because as a brother, uh, that. That dynamic hit home for me. But speaking of Game of Thrones, um, we got to talk about Bella Ramsey, fellas. Um, yes, we got to talk about Liana Mormont. Let's go. She, <laughs> listen, the tr in the trailer, the, the most recent trailer, where she starts imitating a click and going, ah, ah, you know, and then saying, yeah, okay. I'm like, that's that's Ellie. That's that's that's, that's Ellie's um 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 humor, her her sense, her 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 um, irony, her her sass. That's it, and right off the bat the first scene where she she barely you know flips off a member of the, of the fireflies i'm like that's ellie mm -hmm. and seeing her dynamic with um marlene played by the great merle dandridge mm -hmm. is fascinating and different because it feels more kinship to left be um to uh, american dreams the graphic novel more than how the game the first game starts the first game starts and they already know each other. She's like an aunt to her. Yeah. And in this mm -hmm. one, it's like she's finally being introduced to me like, oh, I'm the one who's been taking care of you. I'm the one who, who yeah. moved you around and we got to go now. And um, oh, man. first of all, I'm so happy for Merle that she's she gets to play Marlene again in live action. Yeah. And mm -hmm. hopefully once the, the, the season concludes, I can't wait to see how her dynamics are different and similar between Bella and and Ashley. So, um, Sam, Ty, uh, I think Bella has already rocked it from the get go. And I'm just, I can't wait to see what she does with the role and honoring Ashley. What you guys thought about the first I scene think, and what we got out of Bella thus far? I mean, first, shout out, shout out again to Merle Dandridge because it's very rare you see someone who comes from the realm of voice acting and transition into live action stuff and nail it so well yes she was um marlene you know for the game so this is clearly easy for her but the fact of the matter is they're just you're more likely to see live action act actors like 
you know, Ashley, who, you know, is known for things like um, Blind Spot. I love her in Blind Spot, but she was she's incredible in The Last of Us, you know. So for her to actually for for uh, Merle Dandridge to go from the game to the voice acting and actually just nail it and do everything so well, kudos to her. Not everybody can do that. But going back to uh, Bella, the, the, the OG, the OG Mormont, you know, um, she has uh, she, there are just some people in the world that you know you can comfortably pass the torch on to, yeah. right? Comfortably. She has taken this torch and ran with it. Like, like you said, the little subtle things that you see her do when she's told to count to 10 in the trailer <laughs> where she's imitating the clicker. This is all the jerks. <laughs> the jerk for hire stuff that Ashley did in the game. Yeah. And it's absolutely incredible. And she nails it. I would, of course, love to see Troy and Ashley playing these roles. But, you know, they, they can't play the roles. They don't have the, you know, they're they're not in the position for that. But Joe, you know, Pedro is just, I mean, just doing everything right by Troy. Bella is just doing everything right by Ashley. I mean, this is the last of us. Like, there, there's no, there's no like, oh, well, this is, you know, the 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 film or TV adaptation of the last. No, like, if they gave me a controller, I would sit <laughs> in front of this TV series and input stuff. It's literally the last of us. It's absolutely incredible. So again, this is not a 10 out of 10. This is a 3,045, 4,572, 5,127 out of 10. Like this, and I, I honestly believe this show is just and I'm I'm just gonna stake stake my flag in the ground. This show is just gonna get better with each episode. This this is HBO's next Game of Thrones, HBO's next. Westworld, you know, HBO's next insecure. Like this well, is hopefully they don't cancel it and then take it off of HBO. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I, yeah, hopefully not, but you know, a HBO does some pretty decent smart stuff. WBI, we ain't gonna talk about that, but HBO does some pretty, you know, decent stuff. But out of all the streaming services I have, you know, the Hulu. You know, the ESPN, the Disney Plus, the HBO Max, you know, the Netflix. The one thing I can say I can count on, at least at this point, is that HBO Max has at least given me enough content for me to continue investing in my monthly subscription. Hulu gets a little questionable. It's holding up with the anime stuff. Netflix gets a little questionable because... Netflix is in a situation much like most the other places where the money yeah. fluctuates. You sometimes get yeah. more of the out of the country stuff. Sometimes you got to have a VPN if you want to actually things that you don't know are on Netflix. You change your VPN for those that do that. Get yourself a VPN if you want to see stuff on Netflix that may be in other countries. I'm just putting it out there. It's legal. They let you do it. Same but, for Disney Plus. <laughs> right. Same for Disney Plus. You know, Disney Plus is the same. Disney Plus is actually giving me some stuff. But the, but the thing is, there's still a weight to some things that are coming. They gave me Andor, which is cool. Willow is actually pretty cool. I'm getting to run back through X-Men for the X-Men 97. But the, Disney has a lot of things coming, but they're not here yet. Yeah. HBO has given me what I've always... Here's the big flashy stuff. And when the big flashy stuff goes away... Here's some things to keep you going through. You know, yeah. the Batman is done. Here's the Harley Quinn cartoon show to watch right. to hold you over. You know, hey, done, you know, with, you know, with Game of Thrones. Thank God. Here's a little something we got called The Last of Us to kind of get you through. But here's the big, you know, or here's the big thing. The Last yeah. of Us. You know what I'm saying? So kudos. I hope so, man. HBO. I, I, I hope, hope I hope they navigate this well. And the truth of the matter is, I can't really give it all to HBO. It's really Naughty Dog. 
because the truth of the matter is if God forbid HBO messes this up and Naughty Dog can take it somewhere else, hey, run that sucker over to Amazon. Jeff Bezos will have their back because they know it's guaranteed guaranteed money. I mean, I'm going to say this. With Amazon, they are not beyond throwing money at anything. And they are definitely not beyond showing brutality language or anything else. But I mean, going yeah, the boys back on, laid that groundwork. Right. Going back to what you said about Bella, um, she she embodies Ellie in a way that I didn't think she could. I knew for a fact she's a great actress. I knew she could play this kind of role. But there's something about her nuance of playing it. Like she's definitely got that bratty, you know, you know, don't mess with me type. But it was even the way she interacts with everybody. She doesn't come across as somebody just willing to kill somebody. You know what I mean? Like it's not right. like, oh, okay, like I want to kill. You. Like she'll do it if she has to defend herself, or she'll bring up a weapon if she needs to defend herself. But it's not because she wants to. And that's the way that they're playing her very early on. And I didn't suspect that. I thought it was going to be like, you know what? Like, oh, she's going to, I don't give a darn. Like, I'll do what I got to do. But no, like, when she was talking to Marlene and even when she was talking to Joe, she was asking Joe, like, are we going to make it out of this? Like, do you know where we're going? When she was talking to Marlene, she was like, why did you, why don't you let me go? She said it in the most sincere way. Like, okay, you know this. Am I going to be okay? Is this going to work through? Like, she's asking questions because she's afraid. And that's a very interesting Ellie. You know what I mean? Like, we, we've we seen Ellie's fear, but it's with a whole bunch of sarcasm and stuff, and then we'll get to it gradually. But in her this... defense mechanism, yeah. Right. We see her very strong, yes, because she even... <laughs> one of my favorite scenes is when Marlene is sitting there hunched over, you know, got a bullet in her gut, the girl next to her, she had her ear blown all the way off. And Joel and uh, Tess are kind of like, got him at gunpoint. And then all of a sudden, like, Ellie tries to go for the knife. And he puts the gun. He's like, no, 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 don't point a gun at her. Point it at me. Point at me. And Joel's like, what's going on here? And Ellie's just looking at him like, I, I, I love that. Their first interactions, right. they immediately are not hitting it off. But at the same at that time, they're breaking each other's boundaries. Because Ellie was probably really scared in that moment. She probably was like, yo, this dude about to blow my head off, <laughs> you know? By the time he's punching that guard, she's petrified. The look on her face yeah. is just like, oh, fuck. What the and hell? That's, a, that's another moment. Because initially I was like, Bella, she played that so well. Because on paper, it kind of like, oh, she just wasn't phased by it. But you could tell in her eyes, she low-key was traumatized. Like, she like... What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> she she went through a whole lot of the emotional spectrum between the time she met Joel and the time she saw him beat that dude to a pulp. Like yep. she she tried to attack him with the fierceness. Then she gave him the attitude and the stink when he got the knife and moved it out the way. Then she went to a whole entire, oh, he is going to blow my head off with the fear thing <laughs> when he put the gun on her. Then she got to her little sarcastic little attitude over the whole decades codes then yeah. you know she gets to the she goes from the freak out to the like look calm down calm down this this thing is three weeks old like i'm not infected do not do that like she's trying yeah. to calm test down to the to the oh my god he literally just beat this dude's face to smash this dude's yeah. face in like the knight did to the other knight in House of the Dragon. Like he literally <laughs> beat that dude in. And she she it touched the whole entire emotional spectrum in those moments. And I'm like, come on. Yeah. Bella, Bella is nailing it. Bella is just nailing it. But we knew she was gonna be great from Game of Thrones. This yeah. this isn't this isn't new for us. We knew she was gonna be great, but what we didn't know is how she's actually able to navigate the emotional spectrum range yep. so fluently without a single bit of issue, or at least portray it as if it was something easy and simple. Yeah. Kudos to her. She nails it. She nails it. And I think she's going to nail it every single time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I really don't have anything else. I, I said this before in my non-spoiler. I think this was the perfect pilot 
there are certain things and changes that they made that I could kind of try to nitpick, but then creatively, I get right. it because it's on the format of television. And then stuff yeah. that they they brought in that was like eye candy, like, oh, wow, I remember this moment. This benefits yeah. mm-hmm. me as a person that played the game, but imagine if I've never played the game, this is still great content because there's context I, driving, for the reason driving why by the bur- driving by the burning house. Right, right. And it was like, yeah, it was a different name, but I was like, I get it because it still hits. You understand, like, oh wow, they know the person that's connected to this farm or this area. Oh wow, this makes them emotionally affected by it, but then they still have to move forward because of it. What does that say about Joe and his willingness to do whatever it takes? Like it's those things are still cemented in what the game's foundations were, even yeah. if they're completely different. I, I, I'm gonna say this is a ten out of ten pilot, and I'm excited, and I cannot wait for next week for you guys to hear our discussion on episode two. That's all I'm. Six thousand four hundred thirty-two out of ten. Seven thousand three hundred fifty-five <laughs> out of ten. Eight thousand three hundred seventy-two out of ten. Five hundred twenty-one thousand. Look, exactly. <laughs> hey, look, look, we just gonna say it like this. Yo, the show's power levels over nine thousand. Over nine thousand. It's over nine thousand. Nine thousand clickers. <laughs> but, I, but I said this, it and look. Go ahead, Ronan. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. So th- there's a point where, again, I kept saying about the dialogue that like some of it feels, you know, similar to like basic stuff, and then some of it feels like all the game. There was a point where I started uh, saying the line as it was, you know, played out because I knew it was like I'm like, da, 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 da. and so I was like, Ronan, just calm down, hold it, and hold it. And I'm like, I know, dude, but I'm like, it's it's. Oh, I'm like, I'm so glad they kept those lines. Yeah. Yep. Oh man. And, and I'll say this. Let this. Let this be the notice to any other studio that wants to take a game and adapt it into some form of either movie, TV. Let this be on note. Let put people on notice. It can be done. It can be done. You know, you've given us enough of these crazy <laughs> video game transitions. You've given us the Assassin's Creed. You've given us the Dungeon and Dragons. You look, you've given us all of that. Let's let's be real. The two series right now that are putting you on notice that it can be done. The Witcher. And 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 I I honestly I was with The Witcher being able, but The Witcher has been blown out of the water now by The Last of Us. Absolutely. It can be done. So studios take the time and the effort to put the work in to really do a transition, a transitional piece from video game to live action and keep the game developer studios involved. Those are the core people. Keep them involved, but you are now on notice. You can't come with us with any BS stuff before. You've got to come with the quality stuff now. And I also so, want to say this, because you mentioned transition. For the fans, if you're hardcore Last of Us fans and you're very uh, optimistic, optimistically precautious about this, and you're like, ah, why are they doing this? It's perfect the way the game is. Yeah. Um, and I've heard this from, from people who I admire. Like, there's no need. The, the game is perfect. I agree. The game is perfect. But there's a reality that we just can't break, which is my grandma, my uncles, some of my cousins, some friends who are not gamers or not open to that concept, they simply will not pick up a control. They won't pick up a dual shock. It's just, it's, it's just a reality we live in. But what they will do in most occasions is watch a movie or watch a show. So I think that the game is still there. And that's still, to me, the gold standard. As much as I love this episode, it's 10 out of 10. I want to see how it ends and how it goes in the middle before I fully judge it as a whole. The game is still the gold standard for me. And I say this, that like after the first episode, th- the spirit is there. You, yes. I, as Sam said, you can nitpick the, the details, you can nitpick the dialogue choices sometimes, you can pick where they chose to go with Tom and Joel and, and, and Ellie and Marlene.
but the spirit and essence of what the characters go through and will go through and what the story is as of now, it's there. And that's what was shocking to, to me that I'm like, wow, they switch up a few stuff, but it's there. And now maybe I can convince my grandmother, I can convince my uncles, I can convince my cousins to like, hey, check this out. This is something I love. You might like it too. That's all I say to us fans. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Well said, Ronan. Well said. But yeah. fans, my, my hermanos, Sam, Ty, thank you for joining me in Balls and Bricks and just letting this all out for the first episode of HBO's The Last of Us. Um, Sam, Ty, where can the internet find you, fellas? Uh, go for it, Ty. Oh, well, you know me. You can find me at T-Y-N-I-D-D-Y out the N-Y. I came to D.C. for the degree. Now you can find me in M.D. I'm T Ty Nitty on the Instagram. Holla at your boy. Ty Nitty on Twitter. Holla at your boy. Ciao! Well, I can't rap, but <laughs> you can find <laughs> me at uh, SuperSDL0320 on Twitter, on Instagram, um, if you want to talk to me personally. But as far as you know where we are at is uh, Team JVS, and you can go and check out our non spoiled discussions for every episode of uh, this amazing show. I can't wait to see where this is going to go, uh, Ronan. We've we've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, and oh yeah, some implications and... of things that are very, very important. Oh, oh. Very important. how so... dare you drop that on me, man! I mean, look, I love hey, it though. I love bottles it though. I say that with a lot of love. We, we, we look, Ty. You are welcome to come back. We, oh, you we, know, we I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, you know. Hey, look, Team JBS, no stress. Giving you show reviews with success. Let's go. Holla at your boy. That's for you, my man. That's for you. That's for you, Sam. That's for you. Holla at your boy. And that's off the dome. Unchained. That's off the dome right there. Ronan under unchained. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll be back. Take care, y'all. Yep.